with you. Madison County 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, yes, I need the consulate and an ambulance. Yeah, apparently a guy just shot himself. Alert at all? Is he conscious? Uh, he don't look like it. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin and welcome to Just Thought Lounge. If you're curious and you enjoy true crime, then you've landed in the right place. Here at JTL, we take a look at interesting cases that raise some thought-provoking questions. Today's case takes us to rural Missouri, where an active, happy, and very loved young man found himself one night in the spring of 2021, standing in a stranger's attic, holding a pistol that was not his and pulling the trigger. His death would be ruled a suicide, but those who knew him know better. Let's take a look. Durante Martin was a standout football player for Central High School in Park Hills, Missouri. At 19 years old, Durante was a big guy. He stood 6 foot 3 and weighed about 250 pounds. His friends spoke about how quick he was for his size. He was extremely athletic. Durante graduated from high school in 2020 and scored a scholarship to play football at a small school out of state. He was working to improve his SAT score so he could become eligible to play in college. He was also making friends at his new school. He had recently moved with his mother, Erica Lotz, to Ferguson. Her new place was larger than the last, and Durante finally had a room of his own, free from his siblings. He was thrilled. Two days before his death, Durante left his home in Ferguson, telling his mother that one of his new school friends was giving him a ride to Park Hills so he could visit his grandmother, Kimberly. He never arrived for that visit. On the 25th of April, 2021, two days after he left home, Durante attended the 18th birthday party of a friend of a friend, Lonnie Wade. Lonnie's party took place at her father's house, James Wade. The house was a two-story, old brick schoolhouse building constructed sometime in the 19th century. It was located just outside of Fredericton, Missouri. Fredericton is about 90 miles south of St. Louis, and it's 30 miles south of Durante's grandmother's house. Fredericton is a small and remote place. According to statistics from 2019, it has recorded a population of roughly 4,000 people. Demographically, it is over 90% white and less than 1% of its population is black or African American. At approximately 3 a.m., Madison County Dispatch received an emergency services 911 call out to the old schoolhouse on Route Z. It is the birthday girl's father, James Wade, that makes the call. The connection isn't great, but he manages to eventually communicate the situation. You live in Madison County 911. What's the address of your emergency? Uh, yes, I need the consulate. And an ambulance? Yeah, uh, apparently a guy just shot himself. You said a guy just shot himself? And that's at? Yeah. And is that where you are? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. Is he breathing at all? Yeah. No. Do you think he's beyond any help? Do you want to try CPR? Uh, I'll... Okay, you're cutting okay. down. Uh, see if he's breathing. Thank you, yes. He is breathing? He, he's gasping for air, like I said. Shot at? Uh, in the head. In the head? Uh, yeah, thank you. I can't really see him back there. Alert at all? Is he conscious? Uh, he don't look like it. What was your name? Uh, James Wade. When police and EMTs arrive at the scene, they find Durante unconscious in the attic. Police discovered a silver semi-automatic pistol directly below his left hand with the muzzle pointed in the direction of his hand in a pool of blood. Durante was right-handed, but that hand and wrist were in a cast the result of an injury and subsequent surgery from weeks before. As if in confirmation of the narrative provided in the 911 call, a handful of witnesses immediately told EMTs when they arrived that Durante had shot himself. At the party, Durante was handed the gun by a 31-year-old man who remains unidentified. This man claimed that he gave the teenager the weapon for security after Durante had told him that he felt unsafe. He said the gun had one bullet in the chamber. He also reported that there was another partygoer present in the attic at the time. A 19-year-old later identified as Zachary Graham was apparently with Durante when the gun went off. 
The 31-year-old said that Zachary was pleading with Durante not to shoot himself. After the shot was heard, Zachary then ran out of the room and was seen crying and heard yelling, no, 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 loudly. James Wade then made the 911 call. Police note that the gun owner, as well as the homeowner, appeared heavily intoxicated when they arrived. The way Durante's body was laying appeared consistent with a direct fall to the floor, according to the sheriff's report. It did not appear that his body had been dragged or moved after he was shot, according to the pool of blood in the pictures. This fact was also determined by the emergency responder's assessment of the scene. The pistol was no longer loaded with bullets at the time it was secured by the police. Assessing all accounts of what took place in the house that night, however, presents a less straightforward picture of Durante's death. Conflicting stories emerged in the aftermath of the party, leaving many questions unanswered. One witness said that someone had confessed to killing Durante. Another witness, whom we assume is the teenager that was with Durante in the attic, Zachary Graham, said that he saw Durante in the attic holding the gun to his head. He is the singular witness that says he actually saw Durante pull the trigger. Durante's family, namely his mother and grandmother, with whom he was very close, questioned that he would take his own life, and they are not the only ones. Everyone from Durante's old school friends to his football coach, whom he had visited only days before his death, seriously questioned that such a joyful person could possibly be suicidal. So was something else at work here? Durante had been acting very odd prior to the incident in the attic, according to those who were with him that night. While at the party, fellow students reported Durante acting bizarre and erratic. One person said that he seemed off, bothered, paranoid. A female student reported that he was not himself. He kept looking all over the place, moving really fast, saying, I can't do this. I can't do this right now. Another partygoer said that Durante asked her, why did you set me up? One man, so far unidentified, also told highway patrol investigators that he had heard that Durante was set up because there was a rumor on social media that he was an informant who helped send a man to jail over a shooting months earlier. Police could not substantiate the man's claim, according to a report from the investigators. Why did he end up in this particular house? Uh, if, he w if he ended up in the attic, if that's the story, how did he end up in the attic? If, if, the, the, if the story is, is that he was on drugs, how did he get the drugs? Who gave him the drugs? Who witnessed this? Too many uh, questions and not enough answers. Durante had methamphetamine in his system enough to cause paranoia and irrational thinking, according to a toxicology report cited by Dr. Russell Deideker, who performed the autopsy. Durante's mother, Erica, said her son did not do heavy drugs, but had been prescribed pain medication following surgery on his right wrist shortly before the shooting. The presence of heavier drugs in his system came as a shock to his family, who said it was extremely uncharacteristic of the Durante they knew. The autopsy was performed the day following the party on the 26th of April, it ruled the death a suicide. Methamphetamine intoxication may have contributed to his death, according to the initial autopsy report from Deidecker. The report also said he died from a gunshot wound to his left temple that showed evidence of near contact range of fire. The coroner's claim that this was a suicide made no logical sense to Durante's family. A teenage boy would not attend a birthday party only to take his own life in the attic of a stranger's home. And then there's James Wade, the homeowner a man with remarkable composure when making an emergency call to 911. He says he understands why Durante's family would have so many questions. I can understand how they feel. I'd be angry too if I was hearing 25 stories. I'm just not involved in it, and I wish the cops would hurry up and make that clear. I mean, they got me being everything from a racist serial killer to a uh, big time meth dealer, and uh, you know, uh, I'm neither. I know I didn't do it, and I tried to help him, but nobody's talking about that. You know, they're just making up all this other stuff. Wade says that he was out fishing all day on the 25th and returned to his home about 30 minutes before the shot was heard in the attic. Witnesses at the party have backed his claims that he was on the lower level of the house when the gun went off. But a neighbor of his, one Philip Lawler, says that Wade actually confessed to him one day at a Walmart that he had shot Durante that night. He said that Wade told him that murder was the easiest thing in the world to get by with. Philip asked directly whether he was responsible. Did he kill the teenager in his attic? Damn right I did, according to this reported statement. Philip then told police how Wade described ways to get away with murder via wearing gloves, face coverings, etc., according to the report. 
Wade quickly rejected these statements. He claimed to have never said he was responsible. He agreed to take a polygraph test, which he passed. If you search for information online about James Wade, you will find no shortage of horrifying commentary and a variety of accusations. In the first instance, you will uncover a series of offensive memes posted to his social media accounts. We've made the call not to reproduce any of those images in this video. Wade himself admits that he may have used racial slurs in reference to the horror that took place within his home that night, though this appears to be the most he will admit. He has never been named a suspect by police. To add further mess into an already muddy scene, a friend of Durante, one of the friends that had retrieved him from his home in the days before his death, returned his cell phone to his mother. She said when she received it, all of the contacts were gone and all of his texting history was also erased. It's unclear if these were the only pieces of data wiped from the phone, or if the cell phone in its entirety had been cleared in a full reset. As a result, Durante's correspondence in the lead up to his death is so far unknown. Confused and frustrated by the narrative being fed to them, Durante's family sought independent expertise. Repeatedly told by authorities that she was in denial over her son's suicide, Erica commissioned Dr. Jane Turner, a career pathologist with the St. Louis Medical Examiner's Office, who now has an independent practice, to perform another autopsy. In the event of a suicide, gunpowder residue would have been found on the victim's body, and the gunshot wound would have been at close range. Dr. Turner finds that Durante was not shot at close or intermediate range. There are no findings on my examination of a contact gunshot wound. The contact uh, gunshot wound, you'll see an outline of the muzzle of the gun, an imprint of the muzzle of the gun on the skin. I didn't see those. The end of the gun would have been two or three feet or more away. This entrance wound is what would be called in forensic pathology as a distant entrance wound. She said she reached the conclusion without the aid of supplemental evidence such as autopsy photos and investigative photos. She also said she examined Durante's body after he had been embalmed, which may have been why his body showed no evidence of soot from gunpowder. She believed that the death should remain undetermined and further investigation should be undertaken. For instance, she notes that it is curious that the one individual who states that he witnessed the suicide, Zachary Graham, has never been given a polygraph. Given the divergence of medical opinions and the concerns swelling from his family into the community, in July 2021, an inquest was called to resolve the cause of death. In a proceeding rarely found outside of rural communities, a six-member jury heard the testimony of nearly 20 witnesses. This is a process that takes place only in regions that do not have medical examiners. Testimony was given by Dr. Dedeker and Dr. Turner, as well as James Wade, three Madison County deputies, and partygoers from the night of the 25th of April. Dedeker said he stood by his report and original findings. Other personnel from the county stood firm in their assessment of suicide. The three Missouri highwaymen backed the original pathologist and said that they still believed it was a suicide. Some students from the party testified that Durante had acted paranoid and odd that night. Others claimed various people at the party may have been involved in Durante's death. Although recordings of these proceedings have been obtained by external press, not all of the testimony or identities of witnesses have been made public. So at this stage, no further details can be confirmed relating to what actions were taken by students at the party or specific individuals who attended. So far, none have spoken out. The jury was tasked with determining whether the death was the result of either violence, suicide, accident, or natural causes. After two hours of testimony and two hours of deliberations, the jury ruled that Durante's death was not a suicide. It was a death by violence. The family's suspicion was right all along. Their loved one did not die by suicide. That initial cause of death by the Madison County Sheriff's Office was overturned after an inquest this morning. The prosecutor, coroner, and investigators involved in this proceeding wouldn't go on camera, but the Madison County prosecutor told the I-team he asks for coroner's inquests when there are questions about how someone died. We don't have the answers to who. Who did it? We don't have the answers to why they did it. But one thing for sure and two things for certain, God ain't through yet. The decision means Madison County Sheriff's Department and the Missouri Highway Patrol must go back and reinvestigate. The Associated Press reported that nearly two months after the inquest, 
Durante's relatives worry that investigators, convinced in their initial findings of suicide, are ignoring the ruling from the coroner's inquest jury. Many questions remain unanswered. Was Durante secretly suicidal? Did he willingly take drugs that night? And was that the cause of his reported paranoia? How did his contacts and text messages get erased from his phone? What else, if anything, does James Wade know? The community movement calling for justice for Durante has a petition at change.org that I will link to below. At the time of this posting, there have been no arrests and no named suspects. Thanks once again for joining me here to examine this case. My name's Kevin, this is Just Thought Lounge, and I'll see you in the next one. That's not really possible. Technically, you pulled the trigger. Technically.